for coming back to my channel. So today, what we wanted to focus on, um, I'm gonna do something a little out of the normal. Um, instead of running an experiment or something like that, I have decided uh, to actually do a tutorial and talk to you about how to measure and mix and color your resin. This is a question that we get pretty often in the resin community from beginners, is how do I start? Um, and there are many different ways that you can create many different colors that you can use, types of colors that you can use, um, and how you can actually measure, okay? So, uh, today I already have pre-measured uh, my mold and what I needed, how much resin that I needed for my mold. I'm going to be doing one of these three-tier cake stands, um, and that'll be a separate video as far as the pour and everything like that. I just wanted to get the tutorial on how to actually mix the resin. So, what I did was, is in this particular mold, um, I took a bunch of water and I put it in here because I had read on the internet that this three-tier mold takes about 700 milliliters. Um, so I filled my cup with 700 milliliters and then I would fill each one of these and dump it out and see how much, um, how much water I had left. And it did come out to um, about 600, uh, about 600 milliliters and I also have a couple other projects that I wanted to pour, so I am going to pour about 750 today, um, or mix 750 milliliters today. So, um, this particular cup that I have has all kinds of easy measurements on it as far as milliliters, um, so it makes it really easy. There's other types of cups that have ounces, so if you prefer to measure in ounces, and then there are other cups that have um, cc's, milliliters, and ounces all around the whole side. So there's a few different types of cups you can use. Now, as far as how do I actually measure um, the resin and mix it together, you can do it one of two ways, okay? You can either measure by volume or by weight. Now, there is a debate <laughs> um, as to which way is easier, more accurate, what have you, okay? Here's what I have learned. If you are not very good at math, like I am I'm not very good at math at all, I'm more of a creator <laughs> in that way, um, then maybe mixing by weight might not be as easy. The reason being is because your resin which is most of the time part A, weighs a completely different amount than your hardener, okay, which is usually part B. So if even though it is one ounce each by weight, they don't actually weigh one ounce, okay, because the hardener is so much thinner, more than likely, is a lot thinner than your resin. And you could see by the way that it moves around in the bottle, you know, it's pretty liquidy, right? Versus your resin, uh, let's see, yeah, you could see it a little bit, um, is a lot thicker and takes a lot longer to move throughout the bottle. When I first started, I thought that weight and volume were the same thing. And so therefore I was measuring by weight and my stuff wasn't curing right. And I found out it was because the hardener and the resin don't weigh the same amount. So didn't want you to make that same mistake. So what I'm gonna do is because I need 750 milliliters total, my resin that I use is a two to one resin, okay? What that means is that I need two parts of A and one part of B, okay? So if I need 750 milliliters, I am going to need 500 milliliters of part A 
and 250 milliliters of Part B. Okay, so my cups only go up to 250 milliliters, these little ones. Um, so I'm going to do two cups of the, two, two, two cups, <laughs> right? I, I use the quote cups because I'm a physical cup. But two of these up to 250 milliliters in here and then one of these 250 milliliters. Um, could you use one big cup, right? That's 750 milliliters. Could you use the one cup and pour part A and then pour part B? You absolutely can. The reason why I do not though, and it's my preference that I do it this way, is I will do my A, my B, pour them together in my big cup, and then mix them. The reason that is, is because what if I pour a little too much of part A or part B and they're already in here together. Now what do I do? I gotta try to compensate for how much I think I went over. And that's a pain. I mean, that's gonna be really difficult to try to figure out how much you went over and how much extra of the other part that you need. So for my opinion, I feel more comfortable doing them separately. I'll do my part A, I pour it in, I scrape my cup, make sure I get as much of it out as possible because remember, we measured by volume. And then my part B, and then I'll scrape it out, and then I mix them together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you that process. We'll probably speed it up for the sake of time, but I wanted to go ahead and explain that because I think that's very important for some people to understand. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our part A, and we're gonna do 250 milliliters. See how thick part A is? It's super thick, which is why it weighs more. Okay, so now I'm gonna get really close down here so that I can see if I'm really at the 250 mark. All right, I've hit it. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this because I need two of these, remember? So I'm gonna pour this in here. pretty good that's pretty well scraped so now I'm gonna go ahead and do my second part so now it's another 250 milliliters of part A and scraped and scraped. So now that that's done, I'm just gonna put this cup to the side. I'm gonna clean him out. I like to clean as I go, but that's just me. <laughs> All right, now we've got our other cup and we're gonna do part B and we're gonna do 250 milliliters of part B. And I wanna show you how thin part B actually is so that you could see why measuring by weight is gonna be more difficult. See how that pours like water and not oil? Crazy, right? Okay, we're getting to the 250. We're getting really close, so I'm gonna slow down my pour and get really down, I'm gonna hunker down right, right in front of it. There we go. So I'm gonna take my big cup and I'm gonna pour my part B into my part A. Okay. Normally, what you would want is you don't want to fill your cup all the way up, right? Um, to the tippy top when you are pouring. So once this is actually all mixed, I am gonna separate it into three separate cups. What's gonna happen once this mixes, it's gonna get really hot, okay? It's part of the reaction. It's gonna get super hot. 
what's going to happen if I were to leave it filled in a container this much, you know, because 750 milliliters is almost to the very tippy top. If I were to leave it like that um, to pour, it could flash cure on me inside the cup because it's going to get so hot, it's going to start to cure faster. So the larger your con the larger your container for the amount of resin that you have, the better. Um, but again, since I'm only mixing in this container, it's going to be okay because after I mix it, I'm going to put it into smaller containers and not fill them up as much. Okay. You have to give it room to breathe. So now we're going to mix. Okay. My resin takes, uh, they say about five to six minutes of mix to make sure that it's completely mixed. What you want to do is you want to scrape the sides and scrape the bottom as you're stirring to ensure that you're getting a very good mix. If you get streaks, and I hope you could see it, if you see streaks, then you are not mixed thoroughly, okay? This has a lot of streakiness to it right now. So we're gonna keep mixing. And I'll probably fast forward through this part of the video. But again, you're gonna wanna scrape the sides as you're mixing. You're gonna wanna mix front to back, clockwise, counterclockwise, and make sure you're scraping the bottom, okay? Then every once in a while, you're gonna wanna take out your stick and you're gonna wanna scrape your stick. Because you may have parts of part A or part B that are not mixed on your stick. And then you just scrape it off the side, back inside. Okay? So we're gonna fast forward through the next five or six minutes while I'm stirring, and then I will show you the result. But as I'm going, keep an eye on all these little swirls that are going on in here because they will go away. You can see them, there's still swirls. Okay, you could still see parts that are not mixed. And here we go. for about six minutes um, and I'm gonna just stir a little bit longer um, only because I saw a couple little streaks in here um, so I'm gonna mix a little bit longer it's not exact you know so when you are mixing um, you want to make sure you read the manufacturers manuals and that you're at least doing the minimum amount of time but honestly you may need a little bit longer so um, always do at least the minimum every manufacturer could be different um, I have found that some of the crafting resins, you don't have to mix as long. I have found that they are generally around two to three minutes, but I think it's also because with crafting resins, you're not usually making nearly as much. And so you want to make sure that if you are doing it in a larger volume that you are completely mixed. Um, in smaller volumes, it's easier to, to mix. Um, again, I use a two-to-one resin. There are one-to-one -one resins out there. Most crafting resins are one-to-one. -one. Mine is a commercial grade, and I'll show you um, the bottle again. It is liquid glass, super clear liquid glass. And this particular one is a deep pour up to one inch, 24-hour high resistance for UV. Okay, so that's the brand that I use. If you guys want me to talk about in a different video um, how I chose my resin or how should you choose your resin, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do a video. My resin doesn't tend to get a lot of large bubbles. They're more micro bubbles than anything. And just by letting it sit for a little while, um, probably about five, 10 minutes, it will degas itself. These little micro bubbles all throughout will come to the top and they'll just pop, okay? So I generally let it sit about at least five to 10 minutes before I even attempt to use it. Before I even attempt to mix color in it, I let it degas. 
After I mix color in it, I do sometimes let it degas again because, again, there's going to be bubbles after you mix. All right, and um, the degassing process is uh, going very well. It has been about five minutes. And um, I'm going to actually start to pour this into my um, separate cups, and that will also help because it's so deep in this cup. It's kind of hard to show the sides since it's, since it's so tall, but um, it's a very, very deep cup, and the bubbles go really far. So they have a lot to travel, right, to get up to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and pour them into my separate cups, um, and that will also help the degassing process. And we'll talk about the different colors that we're going to be using and get those mixed in as well. Um, so it has plenty of time to also uh, degas. So... Um, as far as your materials that you want to use, right, you have different options for sticks, right? You have silicone, you have wood. Um, does it really matter which one you use? At the end of the day, no. Um, there are people that uh, state that if you use wood, you're more likely to get more bubbles when you're mixing because wood is a porous material. Um, it has air in it and it releases air as you're mixing. But I would like to point out that if you are using it for resin, um, the first time you use it, it's going to be completely coated, and now you have a resin-coated stick. So it could help in the end. Um, then there's the silicone sticks that are rigid, um, or semi-rigid, I should say. These are really awesome. I have these kind, and then I have uh, little mini silicone sticks that I use for smaller cups, and these ones are very rigid. Um, so I have many different types of sticks that I use. I even have, you know, smaller popsicle sticks. Um, I use whatever because I feel like I can pop bubbles no matter what, right? There's the torching process, which we've talked about. There's heat guns. There's letting it degas on its own. Vacuum chambers, pressure pots, all kinds of other things. So I think that the least of your worries is your stick. Um, if you mix vigorously, yes, you're going to also get more bubbles, so that's a cause as well. Um, so when you're first starting out in resin, um, I don't know if it's really necessary to, um, you know, practice the process first. Practice your mixing. Practice your colors. And then move on to, you know, popping bubbles and all that. Because what if, you know, you buy all this equipment and you really find out you don't like it or whatever the case may be. Um, or maybe you're on a budget. So I say start small, start with the mixing process, the coloring process, and smart, start with a small mold just to see, you know, how you like it. Um, cups, okay? These are another, um, a lot of people use different materials for cups, right? These particular cups and this one are 5PP, which is a type of plastic that can be reused and has a very good chemical resistance. So you can clean them and reuse them multiple times over um, until they get so uh, filled with resin or you know cloudy that you just can't use them anymore, okay? Then there are more disposable type plastics. These ones are disposable. They are a 1PP plastic, so they don't have nearly as much resistance to resin, so these are disposable. Some people like to use Solo cups, Dixie cups, things like that, so whatever you have handy is fine. I like to use a lot of these for smaller projects, these ones with a spout. They pour nice and easy, so I love spouted cups. They even have silicone cups. I haven't tried those yet, um, but silicone cups, you could easily just let the leftover resin cure in there and pop it out, right? So that's a good advantage of using a silicone cup versus a plastic cup. Um, as far as Dixie cups, I will warn you that a lot of the Dixie cup, or maybe an unbranded name Dixie cups, have a wax coating on the inside. That is not good for resin. It may hinder the curing process, and you might melt through the wax because the resin gets so hot during its, during its uh, mixing process and everything. Right now, this cup isn't too hot, so we still have some time to get it poured into its separate cups. But I will say that the Dixie cup, there is that possibility that that wax will get into your resin and could um, affect the curing process. So just know that. But whatever you have handy um, will be fine. I just like to use reusable materials as much as possible. 
um, so that I'm not wasting as much. And it's cheaper in the long run. You know, you actually can save money by reusing your cups over and over and over again. But today I'm going to be using some pigment paste. Pigment paste tend to stain, and so I'm going to go with the disposable option today when it comes to my colors so that I could just dispose of the cups and not have to worry about it staining them. I have three separate cups because I'm going to use three different colors today, and I will show you how to mix your colors together, the different colors, types of coloring that you can use. Um, this is one of my favorite cups, by the way, this, this spout. It makes... Um, filming YouTube videos so much easier because you guys can actually see the pour a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this cup a little less than maybe halfway. Okay, again we want to leave that room at the top so it doesn't flash cure. You don't want to fill your cup all the way to the tippy tip top. Plus we still have color to go. So now this is not going to be all the resin I'm going to need for the entire tray. Um, I am probably going to need more, but I can mix more colors later if I happen to run out. All right, so it's a little, little over half, but that's okay. All right, so I talked about pigment paste. This is the brand of pigment paste we're looking at today. This is, uh, I got this from Dryer Days Art Studio. Um, it's their Color Joy line, Dark Steel Pigment Paste. And then um, I have their same brand, and it's white. It's called The White. This is probably the whitest white I have ever seen in my life. It's beautiful. Then we have your standard mica powders. This one is by Pearlex, and it is called Sky Blue. So this is a Pearlex brand. Um, many different people make mica powders in many different colors. And then I have um, Midnight Blue Alcohol Ink, and this is by Let's Resin. So what I'm going to do, I actually mixed, when I did my experiment, I mixed the Sky Blue and, uh, Mica with a Midnight Blue Alcohol Ink. I wanted to see if it would give me a little bit darker of a color, and it did. It worked out very well, and it looked very beautiful, so I'm going to do that again. Um, and then the white and the steel are going to be in their own separate cups, okay? So we are going to work on the white first. So I'm going to put these guys over here to the side, and we will do our white. Actually, let's use the cup with the most in it for the white, because I think we're going to need more white than anything. Okay. With pigment paste, as you can see, now my camera is kind of whiting this out a little bit or washing this out, but... It's so white and it's very pigmented, as you can see. It's very, very opaque. Give it a good mix inside the jar. Give it a real good mix. Okay, like that. And then I just kind of, you know, let it fall off the stick, <laughs> you know, a little bit. Scrape it. And then whatever's left on the stick is what I go ahead and put into my resin. You don't need a lot of pigment paste at all. It's not a ton. And for a cup this size, I might need a little extra. Usually I use just a scrape, but I'm gonna take a little glob along with it so that I know that I have enough. Because I want a really opaque white. So I'm gonna take a blobity blob. I'm just gonna throw it in my cup. This stuff is very messy. <laughs> So wipe as you go so you don't make a huge mess because I'm a messy creator um, as is. So I try to go uh, clean up as I go. All right, now you're just gonna give it a very vigorous mix. You're gonna see it start to change. Okay, it was clear. Now you're gonna start seeing it kind of look like skim milk and then it's gonna look like a solid milk color. So just give it a really good stir because you wanna make sure that you don't have any unmixed paste in your resin. If you have unmixed paste, it is not going to cure properly. Okay, so you want to really make sure that, again, you're scraping the sides, you're scraping the bottom, you're scraping the stick because you could see there's still some paste on the stick. So I'm going to scrape the paste off the stick into the cup and I'm going to scrape it into my resin and just continue to mix. 
When it's a completely solid color and you don't see any streaking, that's when you know it's mixed really well. I generally do it for about two minutes um, just to make sure, again, that that paste is very well mixed in because you don't want any uncured or any paste stuck into your resin because then it won't cure right. The other thing you want to keep in mind with pigment paste is you don't want to put too much. If you put too much pigment paste, it will also hinder the cure of your resin. The general rule of thumb that I heard, I believe it is 10% of your volume. Um, you can't have uh, more than 10% of your volume in color. Well, at least in certain pigments, and we'll talk about that when we get to mica powders. So with pigment paste, alcohol inks, you don't want more than like, I, I, I believe it is 10%. I'll look it up and I'll make sure I put it in the, in the video when I edit. So now you can see we're getting a real nice solid white. You can barely see the green stick through it. That's what I love. That's what I want to see. You don't get that kind of effect with mica powders. I've noticed mica powders tend to be a little bit more translucent. So you don't really get this real nice, um, dark, thick, opaque effect with um, mica powders. But mica powders give you a beautiful shimmer. So there's that trade-off, right? And sometimes what I do is if I want the shimmer to my pigment paste, I'll throw in a little bit of shimmery white um, and with the white to make it shimmer. So you can make it do that. You can mix different pigments together. So like I was talking about, I'm gonna take the mica and alcohol ink. You can mix different pigments together. You can mix mica with pigment. You can mix alcohol ink with pigment paste. Um, you can mix micas with paste and micas with alcohol. It doesn't matter. Um, as far as what other materials you could use, I hear some people like to use acrylic paint. I do not. I found, I've heard that it and have seen how it can hinder the curing process. So I don't use acrylic paint, but I'm not saying you can't. Um, I just do not. I prefer to use anything that is specifically made for resin. Glitters, there are tons of glitters out there. All right, this looks very well mixed and I'm very happy with the opaque. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that one sit and degas a little bit more. And then the next one we're gonna do is our dark steel. Now this one is a little bit more, has a little bit different of a texture than the white. It is, how do I say, a little chunkier. It's not as liquidy. As you can see, it's a little like chunk. I think that's because of the metallic properties. Um, I did not contact Dryer Days to find out um, because I've actually seen, seen this on many other different creators' channels that the metallics are a little more of a uh, chunky texture. And that's okay because it'll mix into your resin just the same. So again, it's a little bit easier to get a nice chunk in there than, than it was with the white because the white ran off so much. So I just got that nice big chunk on the top and I'm gonna drop that in. See, easy peasy, right? So that's pretty well mixed. We'll put that guy to the side and then we'll bring over our clear. All right, let's see here. I actually had a measurement of what I used, but because I used much smaller cups the last time, I'm going to have to wing this, but you're going to want to use a healthy amount of mica powders like you do with your glitters. Nice, healthy amounts. Big scoops. Okay. All right, now this is a powder. So kind of 
like mixing flour into your water to make like a gravy or a roux, you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't have any clumps because those clumps will then show in your finished product. So you're gonna wanna give this a nice vigorous stir as well. And yes, you are gonna see bubbles when you mix this vigorously, but again, we're gonna let it sit to degas, so no problem. But just make sure you get all that mica powder incorporated into the resin and you don't get clumps. It comes out very, um, it leaves these weird streaks and lumps if you miss them, so that's why I try to mix them very, very, very thoroughly. Scraping the cup, scraping the stick as you go to get it all incorporated. Now this is a beautiful blue, right? Look how gorgeous and shimmery this is. But it's a little light. I was like, ooh, how could I darken it, right? I could have probably tried it with mica. I could have taken like a darker mica powder, like a black maybe, and tried to mix it in. But I was like, what's gonna happen if I use alcohol ink, right? So I did, and I really, really love how the finished product came out. So um, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm not gonna mess with it, mess with my formula, my experiment that I had already done. But I may need to add more alcohol ink than I did the first time because, again, they were smaller cups. So I'm going to try to do like um, maybe six squirts. One. And look how that reacts. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And we'll see how that looks if I don't like it. If it's not enough, then I'll put more. So um, it's better to add little by little than it is to add too much, right? Because once you add too much, you can't take away from the resin. So you just mix a little bit and then a little bit more until you get the color that you desire, okay? So you could see it's starting to darken, which I love, but I'm gonna do a little bit more. And I gotta make sure that I get them really mixed together because I can see in the middle of the cup, there's like not any alcohol ink mixing in. Like I see it at the bottom and I see it at the top, but not in the middle. So I need to mix it a little bit better. Um, but I'm gonna do a couple more, maybe three more. And see how that goes. Oh yeah, there we go. Now it's starting to really get a nice, darker, almost, not sky blue, right? Not midnight blue, obviously. <laughs> and I'm gonna scrape. And alcohol ink will also stain pretty bad, um, especially sticks, anything wood, um, because it's very porous, obviously. But it also does stain, it stains your molds too, but that's okay. Alcohol ink is one of my favorite things to play around with, to be honest. All right, so it is getting a little darker. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more. So another reason why I did this is because of the reaction that you get with the alcohol ink and the pastes, um, along with the mica. I mean, just the, the reaction that happens is pretty cool. So it's not even just for the color effect, it's also to get a really neat swirly effect when you're pouring. So don't be afraid to experiment with your colors, ladies and gentlemen. It is all up to you. It is all an artistic eye and how you want to do it. Just make sure that you're doing it so that you're not affecting the cure of your resin. But yeah, experiment with different things. And um, that's pretty much it as far as, you know, how to measure, how to mix um, your resin and how to mix colors. That's it's, just, it's pretty simple when you come down to it, right? It just takes a little bit of practice. I think that in, um, people are too hard on themselves sometimes. You, and not everybody's gonna be good at it right off rip. 
So you need to give yourself some time to actually learn how to do it. So if you have any questions for me, please leave me a comment and let me know. If you're a beginner and you have any questions um, on, on how to do something or you know a comment for me, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys below. And um, I will do a video on the cake stand. It's going to be completely separate so that you guys can see that and it won't be one massive video. All right, so thank you again so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I make new videos. So until next time, why don't you pour one for me?